Man, Disney was on a hell of a roll in the early 90s. Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin were all giant hit after giant hit. But could anyone have predicted The Lion King would be a gargantuan hit? Hell, a ton of Disney animators left The Lion King during production to go work on Pocahontas, thinking that The Lion King was a sure flop and Pocahontas would be the big hit. I would pay good money to see what their reactions were when it turned out otherwise. Like, the completely other way around. No movie Disney has made before or since has matched the popularity of The Lion King. I mean, it was the highest grossing animated film of all time until it was outgrossed by Frozen not even two years ago. Everybody freaking loves this movie. Everywhere you look, The Lion King is given amazing scores, and on pretty much every Disney ranking list, it's consistently rated number one or at least in the top five. People say it's the best Disney movie ever made, they say it's the best animated movie ever made, it's just the most earth-shattering, mind-blowing animated masterpiece that mankind has ever had the privilege of experiencing on the big silver screen, and if you're starting to wonder where this is all going, I'm sorry, I truly am, but I'm one of those assholes who says this movie's overrated. Now hey, don't get me wrong, I love this movie, it's a fantastic movie, it's, wh it's one of my childhood movies, like, I love it just as much now as I did back then, but, one of the best Disney movies ever, or the best Disney movie ever, or hell, even, one, even the best animated film ever, I just don't think it is. But hey, you know what, I get it. I know why that's the case, uh, the movie being so overwhelmingly popular, that is. First of all, it's goddamn songs, which are catchy and fine as hell, and second of all, it's freaking huge in scope. You guys know what I'm talking about. The big, loud moments of the movie that's epicness are just off the damn charts. The Wildebeest Stampede is a tension-filled thrill ride that ends with one of Disney's saddest moments. Simba's revelation with Rafiki is emotionally charged and sends chills down my spine. And Simba ascending to roar on Pride Rock is pure eargasm and visual drama. Although, I have to admit, when I saw this movie in theaters, Simba's roar wasn't nearly loud enough. And, lest we forget, one of the greatest openings to any movie ever. This movie is just, it's all about the loud epic moments like that, that just leave you in complete awe or have you on the edge of your seat. And did I mention Hans Zimmer's score? Because, my god, his score is orgasmic, And it has a huge role in making these scenes as great as they are. Hans Zimmer's score is so fantastic, it just makes me want to crank the volume up. And it, it's, 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 a, it's a strong contender for the finest score in the entire Disney canon. And although Alan Menken isn't around this time to write or compose the songs, Tim Rice and Elton John deliver the goods like a motherfucker. I think this is the next thing about the movie that people just can't stop raving about. And I don't blame them. The songs in this movie are the shit. I Just Can't Wait to Be King is a fun song with a super catchy beat. Be Prepared is a suitably menacing villain song. Hakuna Matata literally makes me want to get up and dance. That is, if I wasn't such a shitty dancer. Can You Feel the Love Tonight would be my favorite song in the movie if it wasn't for the circle of life. I mean, holy fuck. That, my friends, is how you open a fucking movie. 
I'm really wondering what people who were viewing the movie for the very first time were thinking when the very first thing that popped onto the screen was this. You know what? I think I figured it out. Maybe that's why the movie's so popular. That first scene was just so mind-blowing and the rest of the movie was just good enough. Just good enough that people were willing to declare it the greatest thing ever created by man. Like, you know what I find? The Lion King is the kind of movie that is best seen in theaters. Or if you have, like, a top-notch surround sound system in your home. Like, I have this gaming chair that, like, has a bass, and it has, like, the speakers are just, you know, right behind your ears, and when I watch The Lion King, I just crank the frickin' bass and volume to full blast. And it just makes the movie 10,000 times better. Especially during the Circle of Life sequence. When it comes to The Lion King, there is no such thing as too loud. A little demonstration. So, I'm here on my gaming chair, I got the volume and the bass full blast. Let's do this shit. Fuck yeah! It's the songs, Hans Zimmer's score, and just the sheer size and scope of the whole movie that really kills it. But hey, it's still got great characters who are brilliantly voiced by the like of James Earl Jones and Jeremy Irons. It's got a great story, and it's got a great villain in Scar. Now, you're probably thinking, well, pff, you seem to love this movie just as much as anybody else. Which I do, and yet you say it's overrated. Why? Well, for one, I don't like the comedy. And what I mean by that is, you know, anything really involving the hyenas and Timon and Pumbaa. Now, I don't dislike these characters. I don't even dislike their comic relief antics. But it's just, in a movie with moments like this, or this, this kind of comedy just seems so out of place. It just kind of downgrades the movie for me. And maybe I'm just a lame ass, but I also feel Disney should be above using bowel humor. To put it simply, I love The Lion King as a coming of age epic, not so much as a comedy. Aside from that, there's one major story flaw that almost derails the movie at the near end, and it's an issue that I'm not the first one to point out. As we all know, Scar kills Mufasa halfway through the movie and tells Simba it's all his fault. Simba, of course, carries that guilt with him into adulthood and beats himself up over it. But then his childhood friend Nala and family baboon friend Rafiki show up years later and advise him to face his past. Except it's a past that never happened. That amazing scene with Rafiki is almost kind of rendered meaningless by that very fact. And when Simba goes to confront his past, Scar just uses that against him, so going to confront his past was probably a bad idea. And it's only through Scar's idiocy that Simba even learns the truth and snaps out of his self-loathing. And back to that scene with Rafiki, he tells Simba that he can either run from his past or learn from it. Except, he never did anything wrong. His past was just a lie told to him by Scar, so exactly what did he learn from that? I mean, it's like the writers just wrote themselves into a corner at this part with Scar's plotline and Simba's internal guilt over feeling responsible for his father's death. So the simplest way to resolve it was just Scar 
spilling the beans like an idiot. It's these things and this third other thing that I just can't quite put my finger on that just stops the movie from being an outright masterpiece for me. But hey, you know what? It's still a fantastic movie. And like I said, I love it just as much as the next guy. I mean, it's a childhood movie of mine, it's as popular now as it was back in 1994. And something tells me that that ain't gonna change anytime soon. If you agree or disagree with this video, be sure to discuss in the comments section. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also be sure to check out my blog at the Critical Canucks at blogspot.ca and also be sure to follow us on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, all that jazz. Links to all those are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be seeing you next time. Peace out everybody.